Hey guys, even here and in this video we have a couple of very interesting bodybuilding news and updates and we are starting with this one, a physique update of Steve Kuklo. As you can see this is him at two and a half weeks out of Texas Pro and he is weighing 280 right now. As you can see conditioning is pretty solid, like his glutes are in, his hamstrings are in, his lower back is shredded, he is pretty much conditioned, he's pretty much almost ready for the stage and he is 280 once again. This is Steve Kuklo this year at the Arnold Classic 2022 which is the last time we saw him on stage. He looked good, you know, he did well too, he beat everybody except for Brandon and Bonag, but that was kind of expected because those two guys are the tip of the top of bodybuilding. He beat everybody else, but this wasn't exactly the Kuklo that we know. Steve Kuklo is usually a mass monster and this time around he didn't really try to be as big as he can be, he actually downsized a little, he sacrificed some size for conditioning and he was around 270 here. The biggest critique that Steve receives usually is that he lacks detail. He comes in condition, he comes in big, but his body has that kind of dead look. He doesn't have deep cuts. He is not exactly super separated guy. And here he tried to be more conditioned and maybe he was a little bit more shredded, but he still wasn't the most defined, the most detailed guy on the stage. But he also didn't play his strength. He wasn't the biggest guy on that stage either. Here is for example 2019 version of Steve Kuklo when he won Indie Pro and here you can see how big this guy can actually be. He doesn't have the craziest details, not the craziest definition, but he can get very big and decently conditioned. He brought a pretty good combination of size and conditioning to 2022 Texas Pro which was the last train to the Mr. Olympia which he missed. He didn't win unfortunately for him. Ian Wallier showed up and he edged him out, he beat him so Ian Wallier won two shows and Steve didn't get his Mr. Olympia qualification. He also did the Arnold Classic a little bit later but if I remember correctly that Arnold Classic was a qualification for the next year's, for actually this year's 2022 Mr. Olympia and not for the last year's Mr. Olympia but it doesn't matter because he didn't win it and he wasn't the runner-up. It looked like he was winning and I think he was winning during the pre-judging but later on again Ian Valier edged him out. So Steve Kuklo ended up in third and this year Yano Classic he tried to come in less big, less full. As you can see here he was big, he was the biggest guy in this lineup, he was the fullest but he wasn't exactly super dry, super conditioned, that's why Ian Wallier was able to beat him. So he probably thought if he comes a little bit lighter and more conditioned it's gonna look better, so did it. I don't know, I don't think so, I think he was just smaller, maybe he was a little tiny bit sharper but it wasn't worth it for the lost fullness, for the lost size. And I think he spoke about this as well, he didn't really feel like himself, he didn't like it, so this year, as you can see, right now he is shredded and he is back at 280 again. Sure, there is two and a half weeks until Texas, so maybe he wants to get even more conditioned, maybe he's gonna go down to 270 again, but I don't think so, I really don't think so, I think he's ready as he is, I think he's going to cruise in at this weight and show up at that Texas Pro as big as he can be, as full with this kind of conditioning, and should that be enough to beat guys like Kamal Gargney, Andrew Jack, Quinton area, I think so, I think he is the favorite to win this Texas Pro, he wanted that win last year, he didn't do it, so I'm expecting him to, to redeem for that this year, I think he's going to be the most seasoned bodybuilder in that lineup, he was 6th at the Mr. Olympia at one point, and last year he was beaten by Ian Wallier, and Ian was 7th at the Mr. Olympia, so that's a really high caliber bodybuilder, Quinton is a young guy, Kamal is 212, Andrew Jacked, we don't know what to expect of him, he has a pro debut this year, so I think Steve Kuklo is probably the favorite and I think he has a spot at that Mr. Olympia, I think he should be there and I think he will deserve that Mr. Olympia qualification by winning Texas Pro. If you guys are looking for something to refresh you during these hot summer days, I would suggest a vintage build for you. There is a link down below, it will get you to the website and if you want a discount just use the code EVEN for a 12% discount. Basically vintage build is a 3 in 1 product, it has uh, glutamine, creatine and also BCAAs and it tastes amazing, refreshing, you can drink it during your workout, before workout, after or any time in the day really, it will help you with your muscle recovery and also it tastes amazing. 
Here is Kamal Elgarni, our former 212 Mr. Olympia champion, about a week or so out of Tampa Pro, his open debut and he looks amazing, right now he looks really good, he looks really full and round and also very conditioned and the question, the only question really is can he win Tampa, I don't think he wants to be top 2, top 3 or anything like that, he needs to win that show because he is the former 212 Olympia champion, you had Sean Clarida, who is the same, who won Legion Sports, you had Angel Calderon, who is not a Mr. Olympia, who also won an open show, I think it was last year's Romania Pro, there are so many great bodybuilders in open division who switched from the 212, like William Bonek, like Hari Chopin, we're probably gonna see Derek Lansford in that open division as well this year, so the pressure on Kamal is actually pretty high, it's not like he's gonna be relaxed on that stage and have fun and you know, be like, what happens, happens, no, no, hell no, the expectations of this guy are really high at this point, people expect him to win Tampa Pro, can he do it? That's a big question, I don't know the answer, but he does look great, and I don't want to say he looks great for a 51 year old, it's insane how old he is, but let's just ignore that, he just looks great for any age. We got some shots of his back and here is the back lat spread which I do not like, not at all. He has super low inserted lats that they make his waist look blocky. They are so low inserted that there is basically no V taper, you cannot even see his waistline. You just see his lats and that's it, you see his shorts. So there is no waist. Of course it's gonna look different when he's wearing trunks on that stage, but it's not really gonna be like a super big difference, he does have that issue. This photo is from 2018, so disregard this, this look because I couldn't find any back lat spread photos from recent years, but you can see the structure, you can also see that he can get shredded, peeled, he is kind of known for that, but you can see the structure of that back in the back lat spread doesn't look the best, so that's gonna hurt him for sure. But back double bicep, a complete different story, this is also a recent physique update, you can see his back in, in the back double bicep and it looks really good, it looks really good, so I think this guy actually has a legit chance of winning this year's Tampa Pro Open Division and qualifying for the Mr. Olympia, again in the Open. His only true competition, I believe, is Quinton area, he looks amazing right now, he looked amazing last year as well, but he didn't get to qualify for the Mr. Olympia, he was edged out by Joel Thomas, however he improved significantly in the past year and he's coming strong, and again, he's a tall guy who packed on a ton of muscle, so he's going to be a giant there, and if Kamal beats him, Kamal can be known as a giant killer from that show on. We have another entry at this Tampa Pro and it's Roman Fritz, so he posted this physique update of him and he says that he's doing Tampa. Now, is he really gonna be competitive, is he really be considered a potential winner of this show? I don't think so, I, unfortunately I don't think so. I'm a big fan of his personality, of his physique as well and I hope he won't watch this video and if he watches it I hope he doesn't care what I have to say but honestly he's a little bit too small for these open guys. He works very hard and he wants to be a competitive open bodybuilder but take a look, I mean you tell me what you see, he definitely needs more mass. And it's not like he's not working for it, he's killing himself, he's probably working harder than anybody else out there, I made a video about this, you can check it out, he's eating about 1800 grams of carbs a day, guys, that is insane, his metabolism is incredibly, incredibly fast, he needs to eat so much food and it just doesn't really work, he doesn't grow as fast as the other guys who are eating much, much less. He's doing a whole bunch of insulin every day and he's using a lot of GH and he's very open about uh, his gear, what he's doing, what he's using and he's really pushing his body, he's really trying to force it to grow. He turned his life into a living hell by force feeding himself that much and it still isn't really working the way he wants to. I think he's going to be probably just as big as he was when he competed last, which was I believe three years ago, so it looks like he didn't really make a lot of progress. Uh, I have to be honest, I hate to say this, but that's just what I see. He doesn't look like a mass monster, he doesn't look as big as Quinton, who's doing Tampa, as Kamal, you know, for his height, 
as some of these guys, Steve Kuklo. So yeah, I don't see this guy being competitive for Tampa or Texas. Maybe he can win some of the other a little bit weaker shows that are left before the Mr. Olympia, or he can get the qualification by winning points. But there is no way he's going to be top 10 at the Mr. Olympia. But if he gets to the Mr. Olympia stage, that's a huge success. That's a success enough. Alright, next we have a physique update of Hunter Labrada at 20 weeks out of Mr. Olympia. Take a look at this guy, take a look at the size and conditioning of him at 20 weeks out. I think he was sick for a little bit and so he lost some weight and now he got back to the gym and what happened is basically he just got a little bit leaner and now he probably carved up, he filled up a little bit more and he looks even leaner than before, just as big and full, he looks insane, he looks ridiculous. And if you guys forgot, remember that Hunter Labrada has a huge head, and he doesn't seem as big as he actually is when he's standing alone in the video. If he stood next to some of the other bodybuilders, he would actually be much bigger. Look at his most muscular, he is humongous actually, he is 280 right now. 280 is really big for a guy of his height and also for this conditioning, look at this, look at the glutes, look at the lower back, wow, he's really lean and 280, that is big, that is a big, big, massive bodybuilder, again, I, I don't really grasp how big he is because of his enormous head, but if you stood him next to, let's not even say a, a normal people, let's say next to somebody like Roman Fritz, you would see how massive Hunter actually is, and you can see that he's not really lacking much of anything, his back was his weak spot did he improve it i think he did i think he actually did you're gonna see that when he gets completely conditioned for the stage but take a look at his back right here so he is not peeled and back in the back double bicep only looks good when you are shredded it usually doesn't look that great when you're in the off season granted he's super lean right now but still it looks better, I think he looks better than before, especially that area below his uh, rear delt, and also overall details, I think he gained muscle, and in the back lat spread you can see more of the improvements. This pose definitely looks better in the off season than the back double bicep, and here you can see, take a look. Definitely looks much better, if you ask me I think he improved his back significantly, but we'll see the final package in 20 weeks. Last year Nick Walker was one spot behind Hunter Labrada and he wants to beat him this year, he doesn't wanna be 5th again or 2nd for that matter, he wants to win the Mr. Olympia and is this approach the right approach? Is he training his arms a little bit too much lately? I mean his biceps, take a look at this comment, his biceps look peaky even when they are fully lengthened, even when they are completely stretched, so that is insane, that is ridiculous. Does Nick really want to be the guy that is known for the best biceps in the history of the world or does he want to win the Mr. Olympia by being the most complete physique on that stage? I'm sure he wants the latter, so I don't know if he's really doing too much bicep work or he's just posting a lot of bicep work because his biceps are so freaky and he does very minimum work, but again, this is something that I'm concerned about because Matt Jensen was controlling Nick in this regard, he was trying to hold him back from arm training and I think that was a great idea, I think it worked in Nick's favor, now that he has a new coach that he doesn't work with Matt, I don't know if he's gonna keep doing this or he's gonna just force his arms to grow as much as possible and just have insanely freaky arms which are gonna make his chest look smaller and just ruin his proportions. I don't know if that's gonna happen or not, whatever you guys think, tell me in the comment section down below, like this video if you enjoyed it, and for more bodybuilding videos like this, subscribe to my channel guys, thank you so much for watching, all the best and bye bye.